Hello everyone. In this short series, we're going to be creating a simple character based on the following design. It's essentially one of those wooden artist mannequins, and I think it's a nice design to start with because all of the different parts of the body are sort of neatly separated by these joints, which greatly simplifies the modeling and rigging process. So following this episode will be the modeling episode, in which we'll create something like what you see on screen. Next, we'll rig that so we're easily able to pose the character, and then we'll animate a simple walk cycle and maybe a few other actions to go along with it. Finally, for those of you who may be interested in the game development side of things, we'll also be importing the character and animations into Unity and setting it up with the Mechanim system. Now, for the rest of this episode, I'd like to quickly go over some of the basics in Blender. I'm not going to try and be at all comprehensive here because most of the stuff you're really going to pick up pretty quickly just by watching the series. Primarily, I want to touch on a few things regarding changing views and the object and edit modes. So if that's all old hat to you, then I welcome you to skip ahead to the next episode. For those of you remaining with me, however, we have a new Blender file here. And I'd just like to draw your attention to the top left where we have the words user perspective. Now the user part of this refers to the fact that we're viewing the scene from some random rotation. And you can rotate around the scene, by the way, just by middle mouse dragging, and then you can uh, just move around by shift middle mouse dragging. So if we want to view the scene from a specific rotation, we can go into the view menu, and we can choose to view it from left, right, back, front, bottom, or top. So if I press right, for example, this is just gonna to snap to the right view as shown in the top left here. Now perspective, as you are all aware, is just an effect where things in the distance appear much smaller. Now, often when we're working, it can be helpful to view our scene without any perspective, in which case we can just go into the view menu and toggle into orthographic mode. And now things in the distance appear as if they were right in front of us. Changing views and switching between perspective and orthographic mode is something one tends to do quite a lot. So it's, a very good idea to memorize the shortcuts for these. So for example, going into right view is just three on the numpad. Now to clear up some potential confusion, the numpad refers to the number keys on the right side of the keyboard and not the top row of numbers. Now, if you're like me in that you don't have a numpad, then fret not. All we need to do is go into the user preferences and then in the input panel over here, we just want to make sure that emulate numpad is turned on. And then you'll probably want to save user settings so that that will be the same every time you load Blender. All right, now I'm quickly going to delete this cube just by pressing X and delete. And you can see we've got this little circle in the center of our scene, which is our 3D cursor, which we can place anywhere in the scene just by clicking. And when we add a new object, the object will be added at the 3D cursor. So if I now press Shift A to bring up the Add menu, I can add in a cube object over there. And uh, when we're in object mode, which you can see we are in at the moment down here, we are working with the entire object at a time. So if I want to move this object, I can press G to move it around, R to rotate it, S to scale it. And uh, we can also constrain all of these transformations to a single axis. So for example, if I want to only scale on the X axis, then I press S followed by X and can now scale it just on the X axis. Um, also, it's useful to know that you can enter the values numerically. So if I press S, X, and then five, for example, that will scale it to five units. And then I can just press enter to uh, confirm the transformation. Now, if we actually want to start manipulating this shape, we can then go into edit mode. And you can switch between edit and object mode with tab, by the way. So now you can see we can actually start manipulating the individual vertices. Or if we go down here, we can change to edge mode or face mode. And here in edit mode, as in object mode, it is right click to select. Now, it's important to note that while we're in edit mode, if I now press Shift A and add in a new mesh, it adds it in as part of this object. Whereas if I go out into object mode and now add in a new cube, for example, 
uh, you can see these are two separate objects, and I can go into edit mode on each of them, uh, but not at the same time. Now, in this character that we're going to be creating, we want the entire thing to be a single object. So whenever we want to add in a new cube, for example, for a limb or perhaps a sphere for one of the joints, we're going to do that in edit mode. Now, if you inadvertently add the mesh in in object mode, and you realize uh, somewhere down the line that you've now got two separate objects, you can join them together by selecting one, then shift right clicking to select the other, and then simply control J will join these together into a single object. Alright, so that's everything that I wanted to mention for this episode, so until next time, cheers!